well. So did you see the sea when you came in? I did, briefly, and then off to the side there was uh, yeah, like a lot of nice houses close to the sea. That was pretty good. Let's cross over here. So if we get run over it, we'll be on camera. Sure. Which is, uh... So you've been here four years. Yeah. Did you buy four years ago or did you, I mean. Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah. The place we're in now. And uh, it's good because it's just on the edge of the village. Uh -huh. And it's an easy walk down to the railway station because uh, um, my kids take the train in and out of school. Yeah. Every day. Um, uh, not Felix now, of course, because he's left school, but basically it's, 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 you know, it's not right in the centre of the village, but, uh -huh. or town, but it's close enough that they can walk down and I don't have to drive them in and out, oh, that's good. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's okay, it's just, uh, it suited us for the last three or four years. And it's close to the sea, of course, yeah. which is good. And then um, Seaford is, is a bit of a sort of quiet place, but it's actually very well positioned. We've got, as I'll show you later, we have the, um, uh, all the sort of famous English white cliffs, uh -huh. just uh, at one end, stretching between here and Eastbourne. And then all around the back of us, we have the South Downs, beautiful walking, um, and uh, then all along the beach, it's a very long beach, down to New Haven, and then from there not we're, so far we're to... shooting your chest. Yeah, not, not so far <laughs> to... Yeah, sorry. My chest. Yeah. Oh, this okay, is, cool. It's my house with the uh, solar panels on it. Nice. When did they go on? You can see. Yeah, you can just rotate their handle at the sound of gimbals. So. Yeah. Nice. Nice job. And uh, so it just feeds back into the grid or what? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah, it provides all my hot water and oh, nice. everything so and the surplus to goes to the to grid. To hot water. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's the, the solar, um, uh, there's a sort of element in my water boiler, uh -huh. which it heats up and it boils it like a giant kettle. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So then you're good for, are you good yeah. for winter? Good. Um, I left my keys behind, so I'm just gonna go down the side and in the bottom. Okay. So if you just wait here a minute. Okay. There's a bed. I'll just be one minute. So you can see that white cliffs, the chalky cliffs are studded with, with flints and lines. Uh -huh. Oh, like those lines are yeah, their flints. Yeah, they're flints studded into the... And that's, and that's essentially squid. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Because uh, the, the chalk is turning into the sea organisms. And then, uh, the, so these were obviously in, underneath ancient seas and they gradually built up. <laughs> so these would have been underwater. Yeah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> do we n do you know how old those are? So would this have been underwater, or has this been lifted up in the no, past? No, no. It was yeah. underwater. It was. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So we got plenty of space for the, all that water up in the air. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, that's the stuff you could, so because you can see there. There's a crack. You see. Yeah. So these cliffs are quite fragile. They do fall away every now and then. You can see some big chunks that fell down. Oh yeah.
flint ancient squid that's ancient squid right Dave yeah and then use for and then So what one did you just try to... Yeah, do you smell the... the you can smell the smoke, right? I'm just trying to... I've got to get it on a hard... I've got to get it on a hard surface. doing a very good job. What are you trying to do? Break it? Yeah. Get it going. Yeah. Oh. Oh, now, it is. All right. So, if you if you chip that, then when you you can then you can chip away until. You can feel how sharp that edge is. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. This one is. You can see. You can see this could be made into a spearhead or an arrowhead. Mm -hmm. We've been very careful chipping round. Yeah. Very careful. So you want to get rid of this. So you doing it really well yeah but with practice you can you can make you can gradually break it down and if you're skilled you can and that's that's quite a sharp cutting edge you know yeah so if you're skilled you can um uh you, you can make really quite quite good little tools from it uh -huh. cutting or cutting tools or arrow, like if you wanted to scrape skin, yeah. you know, or whatever. So these are super valued in the old days. Uh, how far back would you go? Well, in the Stone Age, oh, because okay. then later that was superseded with bronze and then uh -huh. and then iron tools, so yeah. whereupon people stopped using this sort of thing. Right, but for, for thousands of years, you know, the, these flints were among the most sought after tools. Mm -hmm all across uh, sort of wherever humans were to have sort of This lovely smoky sort of brown and grey uh -huh. type of. Um, I mean, it's just crazy like, that that was squid. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> Shoals of them. You could imagine. You see the line. Yeah. It's like basically the sea line, isn't it? So, so the sea was just maybe taking around one of those lines. There was a shallow sort of sea above it, and then. The shoals of squid, millions of squid, were there in the shallow sea, and then the, it evaporated, or whatever. The sea withdrew, and the squids were just left, and then buried in the in the soil, and sort of, uh, and um, they just sort of, I don't know, they must have sunk.
So this is a bit of a nice piece of pork. So no kidding. Wow. Yeah. Big. <laughs> okay. Is that right? That's the Chinese character. Big. Yeah. Whatever. It's basically the same stuff you used on the blackboard at school in the old days. Mark making. Humans like mark making. That's what chalk's good for. for the <laughs> you should keep a piece of chalk. Okay. Yeah. You should keep one little piece of chalk and one little piece of flint. And Uh -huh. That over there. Yeah. But right. as the tide is coming in and it's quite high, uh, it would be too dangerous to walk around the cliffs now. So we we'll go back up. What do you do to turn it into place? Well, I grind it up. You grind it. And that's it? Yeah. You add oil to it or something? Yeah, whatever, some medium. Uh huh. Yeah. Hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, no, that, that was um, my, uh, almost my first week at university. Uh -huh. And we were talking about schools, right? And um, uh, that girl became my girlfriend for quite a while. Oh, really? I'm still in touch with her. Uh -huh. um, uh, and basically, I sat down in the sort of canteen, and there were two very talkative, noisy girls sitting opposite me, so I tried to ignore them, because I was very shy. Now look at this, this is amazing. Look at that gorgeous. This is one of the best views in England. And is there fish in there? Is yeah. that is that tidal? Yeah, tidal. tidal water. This is tidal. Wow, it's crazy cliffs here. This, this is the only river in England which goes all the way down and it is out of the sea and has no settlement on it. Why is that? Uh, they just never built a settlement. Uh -huh. There's a few, there's a little cottages for the coast guard. Uh -huh. uh, every other significant river in England has some sort of village around the mouth of it yeah. or some, you know, but this one stretches all the way back, all the way up to the village. Oh, Yeah. See, just over on the right, there's yeah. a white patch. That's an old white horse. Oh, yes. And they scratched into the... An old white horse. horse. 
What is it? Oh, you know, so they uh, carved it into who, the. Who did? Who carved it? Uh, it's, they're not totally sure, yeah. but uh, the, um, the because the chalk is so white, you know, ever since like Neolithic times, has there, there been people have scratched out like giants and various things. Uh, and after they deforested. Just as Yeah, after they deforested. <laughs> So a horse. Oh, look at that. I see him. She said, oh, I was in a very old school. And I said, how old? And she said, oh, it's like 150 years old. And I said, yeah, I, actually my school is a thousand years old, more than a thousand years, right? And she was just like, oh. <laughs> And she's been after yeah. me ever since. Because that, <laughs> that school is, was actually attended almost certainly by King Alfred, uh -huh. you know? In the 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 eighth century, ninth century, in the Saxon times, because he was um, uh, Sherburn was the the capital of Wessex in those days, and uh, the the uh, they had a little school there, and um, uh, it's, it's almost certain he was there, but certainly it dates to that time, you know. So it's so ancient, right? <laughs> I just remember this look on her face when I said that. Yeah. That's great. I've told that story many times. Oh, right. <laughs> and now I have it. Now Over I have the it. last thousand now years. Have it now you have the official version. Because that's like, that's so American. How busy the countryside used to be. Yeah. 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 So, how did that end? Well, with the um, Industrial, Industrial Revolution, Revolution and the sort of enclosures and people moved off the land to the cities and um, uh, the, the farms moved to sort of bigger fields and they rooted out a lot of the hedgerows and they ploughed in the cottages. I mean, the, and, the, the enclosure and, movement. And now right? people think, oh, the countryside is, is natural state, is natural. very empty of people. But, yeah. but for hundreds of years, it was very busy with people, uh -huh. you know. But of course, it was very productive too. But I mean, the, the enclosure movement is a kind of privatisation. It was a privatisation of, of the countryside, you know, which in the 18th, so 17th, 18th, and into the 19th century. Um, because you had to, there had to be an act of parliament in order for the countryside to be under, um, like, modern single person ownership, uh -huh. you know, and um, before that there was much more sort of common land and, uh, and the farms were divided into small strips fields you know that were and then the dimensions were based on the ox cut on the ox plow right and um oh yeah look at that yeah. that's a fish <laughs> and, then, uh, and then anyway, then, then these these Stone Age people were, had they were making their flints and exporting them and you know whatever they did, and um, then the Ice Age came along and and all humans, as far as we know, died out. There was not a, no humans well, left in Britain. We don't know because there was, like, as far as we can tell, yeah, there. there's no evidence that, that any humans survived through the Ice Age. They, they would have moved. Well, they moved. They moved. They yeah. went because it was a land bridge to Europe, so they would have moved. Yeah. As it got colder, I assume they moved across. Then the, the ice would have. I mean, they would have gotten yeah, colder. As the, as the ice built up, oh. the sea level went right yeah. down. Right? So. <clears throat> and then uh, the, 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 the ice gradually receded, and by then it was sort of like the Bronze Age. And Bronze Age people came across on the land bridge from Europe up in here and they started forming settlements all along the, the ridges, these ridges, because they didn't want to be down in the weald. The weald was thick forest and uh, they didn't have implements good enough really to cut the trees and the soil was very clay and heavy and they couldn't really farm it. But up on the hills, 
they, they could farm the lighter soils, you know, and forage and stuff like that. And then they have their little little hilltop forts and settlements all the way along. So these stone, these Bronze Age people lived on the ridges all around here, right in the South Downs, the North Downs, and you know all around. And uh, then um, uh, they 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 you know they gradually sort of settled it and, and introduced their sheep and you know everything and then um, they basically eventually the sort of Romans turned David, so you had sex with a chicken? <laughs> The chef. The chef. Yeah. The Anthony Bourdain story you told reminds me of it a bit. <coughs> but basically, he, this young guy, he's so keen, he's just so passionate that he wants to be a chef, but he gets into every trouble, you know, and everything, you know. And I think he's a house painter initially. He's, he's house painting some building nearby and he, he's watching through the window of the restaurant or something. 
Um, but anyway, he gets his chance to do something. But he has an amazing... That he, really good. What he has is he has an amazing memory for all the ingredients of all this. He, he knows all the dishes of Le Chef, like the famous guy, down to the last detail of his, you know, he amazes Le Chef by remembering all this stuff. He doesn't necessarily know how to make it, but he, rem he somehow studied his recipes, you know, and everything. <coughs> Do you remember that film? Ratatouille. The Ratatouille is another Is one. it? Is it? And Ratatouille, is that similar? Ra Ratatouille is a car the cartoon, isn't it? That you must have seen. Have you seen Ratatouille? Animated, I haven't yeah. seen it. That's funny, you'd love that as well, actually. There's there's a, there's three chef films that Felix, are great. Would you care for another piece? Mm -hmm. There is Le, Le Chef <clears throat> and uh, Ratatouille, of course. Um and then there's some other one. Maybe we'll dig out Le Chef this evening and watch it. Mm. You know, you know, in China, People tend to eat with their mouths open. Do they? Often. But in the West, we're taught to eat with our mouths closed. Uh -huh. And we train our kids to eat with their mouths closed and not talk. Yeah. And their mouth is full of food. Yeah. But there was, there was an article last week by this food psychologist or whatever. Uh -huh. And he said that actually we should retrain ourselves and our children. But definitely we should retrain our children to all eat with their mouths open. Uh huh. Because when you eat with your mouth open, the, 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 the smell of the food comes out and goes up your nose. Uh -huh. And when you eat with your mouth closed, you don't get that such intense sensation. And actually, we should put the food in our mouth and sort of masticate it with our mouths. <laughs> and, I, and I thought, yeah, actually, he's probably got a point. Maybe. No, it's what only the opinion of what... An article shared on Facebook. No. You buy it. Or is that you? I can't remember where I read it, but I read it and it caught my attention. Because I taught you guys. You know. Special. Oh right, well you're filming, you're having a nice filming session. Yes. Yeah. The bridge. The bridge. Yeah. 